For those of you that may have forgotten, Manifest is the story of Flight 828 and all the passengers aboard who disappeared for over five years, only to reappear with no idea how they had been gone. Everyone on board and their families were affected. Children lost parents, spouses lost lovers, and friends lost each other. Today we're going to be talking about the Manifest unscripted moments. First on the list is the death of Grace. Anne saw Grace die after being stabbed by Angelina, but first the mother of three united with her now teenage son, Cal. However, she certainly would not be the first Manifest character to be resurrected. There be a spooky haunting. Carcanus told TV Insider in June 2021. Rake, for his part, kept his description of Grace's ending vaguer, but noted that he did not make his decision to kill off Grace lightly. There's nothing flip about this, he said. There's nothing manipulative about this. There's nothing spiteful about this. This was part of our story, and her significance in Manifest remains as strong as ever. Her character lives on through Cal, through Olive, through Baby Eden, and of course through Ben as he tries to carry on without her. Then we have the reaction of Ben to the tragedy. Ben was trapped in a calling when Angelina attacked Grace, so viewers could not witness his reaction. A season 4 of Manifest for Ben is absolutely centered around processing, digesting, coming to terms with such an unspeakable loss, then trying to find a way to seek vengeance to kind of justify the act in terms of finding some meaning out of it. Rake detailed to TV Insider, adding that the moment becomes the absolute driving force for his character not only in season 4, but in the back half of the series. Dallas predicted that his character would continue down a reckless path in the wake of the tragedy. He's going to have a lot to deal with, and whether or not he keeps that sort of dark edge that's been creeping into him into season 4, and whether that gets bigger. I can imagine that not only is he going to be even more propelled to find out what happened to him, but what happened to Grace, and who's responsible, and where's his baby, and where's Angelina? The actor suggested, I don't know if he's going to handle all of those things within the letter of the law. Next is the disappearance. After touching the plane's tail fin, Cal vanished before popping back up in a calling with Ben, Michaela, and Sonvi. When he returned home, he was a teenager, suddenly the same age he would have been if he had gone on Flight 828 with his dad and aunt. It's for Ben and the others to figure out where he's been. Why? he was there, what happened there? Rake teased, noting that Cal's sacrifice of more than five years of his life was one he made for everyone in the world. The brief reappearance of the plane's pilot, Captain Daly, during the season three finale offered another clue. Ben understandably is going to come to believe that his disappearance, the passenger's disappearance, Captain Daly, Cal, the tailfin itself, that they've all been going to the same place that his divine intervention is the puppet master moving the strings. Rake said, as Ben McKay Kayla, Sanvi, everyone continues to try to put the pieces together. They're going to try to decipher whether it's possible to access that place if this is purgatory, some unknown destination that no one knows about. It'll be part and parcel of how they try to save themselves. The moment when Zeke confessed to believing that Jared is still in love with her. Do you know how it feels to ache for characters to be together desperately? For them to push everything aside and take the plunge? Well, if you're a Manifest fan, then of course you do. Audiences embarked upon Flight 828 back in September 2018, and an obsession was born courtesy of creator Jeff Ray. Indeed, the mysterious supernatural drama has proven compelling from the very start. There's been a great deal of digest over the years, as there would be when you discover that you've been gone for over five years. However, one of the biggest draws is chronicling the relationship between Melissa Roxborough and J.R. Ramirez's Michaela and Jared. Before stepping away from the notorious flight where it all began, Michaela contemplated whether she was going to accept Jared's marriage proposal. However, in her five-plus year absence, he had married her best friend, Lourdes. Despite the crushing blow, they continued a working relationship, leading to them sleeping together behind Lourdes' back. This colossal secret resulted in them drifting further apart. Later in the season, she met Zeke Landon, and the pair began to explore their relationship. Jared, on the other hand, ended up splitting from Lourdes after his affair was revealed. Towards the tail end of the second season, Zeke and Michaela tied the knot and remained together throughout season 3. However, the finale presented fans with some serious food for thought. Jared went to Michaela's house and, upon his exit, Zeke confessed to believing that Jared is still in love with her. This was cemented when he told her she is the love of his life. Very end. So as we wrap up this season, their relationship is plagued with questions, and only season 4 will tell audiences what they're desperately dying to hear. Next up is Cal throwing Zeke a bachelor 
party? No other friendship compares to Zeke and Cal's. Cal was even Zeke's best man and threw him an epic bachelor party that included eating a bunch of junk food and playing Monopoly. They've shared an unbreakable bond since the day that Cal saved Zeke in the cabin. Zeke repaid in favor in the season 2 finale by using his final moments to bring Cal to safety. Also, we have Vance's return. Inside the van is someone Ben never thought he'd see again, NSA director Robert Vance. When Flight 828 landed, Vance was the first one to question the passengers. Ben and Michaela initially suspected he was the enemy, base of a government conspiracy about their plane. But that turned out to be incorrect. Vance was just as much in the dark, conducting his investigation into a different agency trying to cover things up. That X-Files angle was one of the things that made manifest such a tree, turning it into Lost meets X-Files meets This Is Us. But then Vance was killed during the raid on the government-sanctioned Singularity Project back during the Season 1 final finale. Dead Reckoning. With Vance gone, the government conspiracy investigation angle fell apart and Ben was left without an inside partner on his hunt for answers. But now Vance is back, telling Ben, you're not the only one who can come back from the dead. So what happened? Did Vance fake his death? What has been doing all this time? At least Vance can cheer that whatever comes next, the government conspiracy angle is back on for Season 2. Bringing Vance back from the dead was a huge twist that had so much potential, but this fell flat because he didn't do all that much upon his return before going into hiding again, then coming back out to tell Savni to play the long game, which she also ignored. Michaela and Zeke headed for a divorce. Jared essentially told Michaela during the season 3 finale that he only let her marry Zeke because he thought her now husband was dying. Zeke then informed Michaela that they needed to talk, spelling trouble ahead for the beloved pair. I don't think that Zeke is going to throw in the towel so easily, and I think that Michaela is deeply conflicted, Ray hinted. We're going to watch that conflict play out. It'd be too easy for the story, and it would be too easy for the characters to walk away from that marriage. I would never expect Michaela or Zeke to throw in the towel in on each other, nor would I expect Jared to throw in the towel. He made his intentions quite clear standing out there on the street in those final moments of the season finale. So you can expect much more heartache and tension as we continue to kind of play the sine curve of that triangle. The moment with Savni saved the lifeboat. Sanvi had a calling for the first time in a very long while, leading her to question whether her return of the tail fin to the ocean cleared her for murdering the major, Elizabeth Marvel. Rake acknowledged that it appears that Sanvi has redeemed herself, but other passengers will find themselves in similar situations as they navigate the gray areas of right and wrong. He anticipated that questions of who will live and die would be addressed all the way to the end of the story. It could be a basic line, a simple gesture, or even an entire monologue. Hell, we constantly quote and reenact the moments ourselves like obsessed cult followers. And knowing that our favorite moment was off script leaves us with a greater admiration for the actors. Multiple major and supporting manifest characters deserve to have their stories ended properly if they receive a two-hour movie finale. Following NBC's decision to axe the show after the conclusion of season three, it was reported that manifest might stand a chance at coming back. It's possible that the series could return with a fourth season or a two-hour special. Most of the time, a film script is a story plan. It gets passed through a whole line of professionals from screenwriters and producers to directors and studio executives to ensure everyone's on the same page. But some of the most memorable moments in cinematic history were created off the page and on the spot. Thanks for taking your time to watch this video. See you next time.